One of my favorite builds of all time is the Celestial Firebrand. It has a frontliner playstyle that can support allies while also doing a lot of control and damage. So it's essentially like a paladin where you can get in there and be useful in a lot of different situations. So in this video, I'll be going over some of the changes to the Firebrand and updating my paladin build guide so that you can understand these changes and also play one playstyle for all game modes, which I find to be really fun. So let's just get straight into it. Before the Firebrand Tome pages were separated to each tome, meaning you wanted to go into that tome and use all the skills that you could in that tome because you wouldn't get those pages back. What this meant was you could use a lot more skills, but you had to use a very defined set of skills. Now you can go into any tome that you want at any time. Activating a tome will activate virtue activations like getting Aegis, or if you have virtues, you could get stability. So when a tome goes red, you are essentially lacking that passive. It just shows you the cooldown. But now you've got access to any tome that you want. So even though you have less skills that you can use overall, you have more utility in being able to use them when you need them. So for example, if I have a lot of condies on me and I want to cleanse them, I have to go into my resolve tome, but then I'm stuck in the resolve tome and I can only cleanse, but you don't need just cleansing. Sometimes you need cleansing and CC, and then you want to go into the fire tome. So you have a lot more flexibility with the new firebrand tomes which is what I really enjoy because it makes decision making a lot more rewarded. So let's go over a trait real quick. The Swift Scholar is going to give you an extra tome page when you use three skills in one tome. So if I go into a tome, I can use three skills and you'll see it's tracking Swift Scholar. If I use two, it shows a two. And if I use a third, I'll get an extra page. So essentially what I wanna do is I wanna stay into a tome to use three skills or I want to use one skill and then leave and then go to another one because if you use two skills then it's like well why didn't you just use an extra skill because you'll get an extra tome page for free so you could just use one of those one costing tome pages and then you can essentially it's getting it for free so you want to know specific combos that use three pages or you just want to use the most powerful skill and then leave. The Grandmaster traits have also changed quite a bit because Loremaster no longer gives you all of the passives. Now you have to choose which passive you want to retain while that specific tome is on cooldown. So when you use a tome, it goes red. That just means that the passive is no longer there and any traits that are reliant on that passive will also reactivate whenever that's off cooldown. So the tome passives are going to be retained depending on the Grandmaster trait that you take. So Quickfire is the Tome of Justice passive. You're gonna keep that even when it's on cooldown. And then you also get Ashes of the Just whenever you give Quickness. So this is like the DPS option. It's pretty good, but I really like Lore Master for more like PVP oriented builds because you retain the Resolve passive, which gives you more sustain while also being able to heal allies. And then you have a six second interval on your tome regeneration. So normally it's an eight second interval. You get your pages back, but now it's six with Lore Master. The specific tome skills are gonna have different costs. So using them is very decision oriented. The four and five skill, which are very powerful skills in the Justice Tome, are actually one page cost. So you always wanna use these off cooldown because they're very high value. You get a lot of damage out of these. So DPS Firebrand builds don't have too much cost on their damage skills. Now the Resolve Tome has Radiant Recovery, which used to not be so good because when you went into your Resolve Tome, you had plenty of healing skills to use, but now you can go in at any time. So you can just decide to use one cleanse if you need it. So you don't overkill your cleansing. You use as much as you need and then you leave. And then you've got the Shining River is always going to be great because the water field can be comboed for even more healing. And then now Eternal Oasis will convert five conditions into boons. It is pretty costly, 
but this is a really high impact skill now. And then in the protection tome, you've got a lot of cost on these abilities here. So pretty much everything is like two tome pages. This also means that the stalwart stand in the courage tome, the four skill, which is a stun break, is now accessible to you at any time. So you've got stun break accessible to you at any time, even though it's kind of costly. It's a lot of utility. So you can run a build with like one stun break and then kind of like rely on this to be your second stun break. The equipment I use for all game modes is full celestial with Rune of the Fireworks. Fireworks gives you some extra movement speed, some boon duration, and some extra boon application, which is just really nice for this build because if you want to get swiftness, you have to use up your tome pages and that's not really worth it all the time. So if you really wanted to, you could go for the Balthazar rune for more damage, but I like the fireworks for more versatility. Then I go for the axe and the torch with doom and torment sigils because those give you the most condition pressure while giving you extra conditions you don't have access to on Guardian. So the Torment is going to trigger every time you crit. You've got plenty of crit on this build. And you've got Doom, which will trigger whenever you swap weapons. But because you've got the Tomes, this will count as swapping weapons. So if you just want to do damage, you can camp the Axe and Torch. And then whenever you enter a Tome, you'll get the Sigil of Doom to trigger and do extra damage without having to go into your greatsword. Now believe it or not, the greatsword is actually a more defensive set because Axe Torch is just more aggressive. If you want to use it as an aggressive set, like as a secondary aggressive set, then you can do so with more swap sigils like Geomancy, but I like to play a little bit more defensively when I'm on the greatsword, so I use Energy Cleansing. While I like the greatsword in open world PvE and world versus world, I really do like the hammer as well, so I replace the greatsword with the hammer for group PvE content and for PvP. So you want to have a couple weapon sets here that you can swap out, and the hammer is going to give you a lot more CC, and it's going to give you a protection symbol which can help you keep your allies alive. The traits I take in PvE are Honor and Radiance. Celestial builds want to improve their somewhat mediocre stats by using boons. So whenever I use my heal skill, which is a instant cast skill, I will gain protection, resolution, and quickness because I will create a protection field underneath me and I will gain resolution and the skill already itself gives those boons. And then I will also gain quickness from Liberator's Vow. So just using my heal skill off cooldown is pretty much what you should do. You'll gain all these boons and you'll gain might because you have resolution and you'll also gain might whenever you crit. So you've got a lot of might generation to do a lot of damage and you gain critical hit chance as well when you have resolution and extra crit chance whenever you hit a target that is burning. So you've got pretty much like 90% crit chance. Also the torch trait in radiance is really important because this gives you extra burning damage and will give you a second charge on your Torch 4. So you can use two Torch 4s, and that's your highest damaging ability. So make sure you always use your Torch 4 off cooldown. The final trait I take is Quick Fire, which gives you the Justice passive while you've used your Justice active. And that's really important because you want to be constantly getting burns by hitting the target, but it will also give you extra burns whenever you give Quickness to an ally. So this scales up pretty well in team-oriented combat. Doing damage on this build is very simple. Just use your symbol off cooldown, which gives you fury, and then use the Zealot's Flame. You've got two of them from the Radiance trait, and use your Mantra's off cooldown to get the highest uptimes. And then when your Zealot's Flames are on cooldown, you want to go into the F1 Tome and use two, four, five. Those are your highest damaging abilities, and you'll get the Swift Scholar bonus. So you only are using like two pages instead of three because you're getting one for free. And you can do that every 20 seconds. So essentially you want to go through two rounds of your Zealot's Fire and then go into your Tome page. Now that's the easy part. What's hard is knowing when to use your other Tomes because you need to react to projectiles when your team needs the projectile reflect. 
use that. If they need to block a mechanic, use the Unbroken Lines. If they need cleansing, use the Eternal Oasis or the Radiant Recovery. So just make sure that you are paying attention to your allies because this is a supportive DPS, not a selfish DPS. This is the Fractal Mitrin boss. This encounter has quite a bit of pressure on it, so I'm going to show how I perform my role while handling these mechanics. The role of this build is not really a healer, it's more of like a tank. You want to give out quickness to your allies with the Mantra of Solace and the Mantra of Potence, and then from there you can choose your utilities. You don't need to bring the same utilities for each encounter, and it's actually suggested that you keep changing it to counter whatever mechanics you're going to fight. So if you need Reflex, then go for more Reflex with the Wall of Reflection. If you need Stability, go for Stand Your Ground. If you need to block a specific attack, then you want to bring Advance. And the Elite skill, you can go for the Elite Signet. I like to go for that because it gives a little bit more healing and in high pressure situations, I can use it to top off my allies because it's not a full healer build, so you don't need the healing all the time, but in some situations, yeah, it can be nice. And you can go for the Quickness Elite Shout if you really wanted to, but I feel like you don't need that extra quickness up time because you can, you can pretty much give enough quickness without it. And what I'm going to be doing in this encounter is mostly focusing on conserving my tome pages. So you can see here, I use my Axe 3 to pull in the enemies. And that's going to help my team do a lot more damage by organizing the enemies together so they can cleave them out and take less pressure. So you can see how like the idea of the build is not to heal my allies so they can survive. It's to facilitate them so that they can survive. And that's done through the blocks that I give, cleanses with the Resolve Tome. The Resolve Tome 2 skill is extremely important for these situations where your team takes a lot of condition pressure as my trend will do here with her little uh, cleave because not only will it give them a lot of bleeding which will kill them but it'll also give weakness and prevent them from doing damage so yeah that two skill is really low investment it's only one tome page and you can just pop in whenever you want it's low cooldown so it's extremely powerful and if your team is like taking a lot of pressure then you can use a little bit more tome pages with the five skill in the resolve tome which would cleanse five conditions instead of like two or three so you want to conserve those tome pages because normally you'd be using the justice tome right and you want to do the combo right the two four five and that will cost only two pages because you'll get the swift scholar but the tome pages are, are not going to come back that fast so sometimes you want to even skip that if you just want to support your allies you can still do decent damage because you've got the torch four and that's really low investment. You can just use the Torch 4 and that'll do a lot of your damage right there. And then you can focus on supporting your allies afterwards with the cleanses on the tomes and just focusing on organizing enemies so that your allies don't die. And here I use the Elite Signet as well because we're just coming out of a really high pressure situation. And yeah, I can also use the Hammer as well. So the Hammer Auto Attack will allow me to put out a lot more symbols and since my symbols will heal that will also give out a decent amount of healing to my allies and it's a renewable resource since I can just auto attack to get it. I've also got the ability to cleanse conditions with my two skill because it's a blast finisher when used in my light fields it's a cleanse condition and I've also got the torch five so if I'm really low on tome pages and we need cleansing then I can use the Torch 5, and it's kind of hard to aim it on your allies, but it will also cleanse, so you can conserve your Tome Pages like that. If you need to cleanse and protect, you can use your, your uh, Courage Tome, and then use the Torch 5 as I did there. And that's, yeah, kind of how you want to think about the build, is supporting your allies through more of like a tank playstyle rather than a healing playstyle. You want to be up there and controlling the enemies, thinking about what the enemy is going to do next, and protecting your allies from it rather than reacting to it and then just healing them. So yeah, we're just pulling in enemies here, giving out as much damage as possible when those adds are out to cleave them out, and then giving out the Aegis here as you can see in stability. There can be quite a bit of days in this fight, but that's pretty much it. 
In PvP, you don't have access to the Celestial stats, so instead we'll be going for the Avatar Amulet and playing a little bit more of a supportive playstyle. Though it is still very aggressive, and we'll be using the Hammer and Axe Shield weapons, which have a lot of CC, and you can facilitate your allies by giving them quickness and securing kills by locking down the enemy so that your allies can kill them. So we're going to be going for the Avatar Amulet Doliac Rune. Doliac is a little bit tankier. We could go for more supportive, but I feel like the Firebrand has a lot of support anyway. So you want to be giving yourself a little bit more tankiness because the counter to a Firebrand is just focusing it. So you want to be able to survive so that you can be there to even support your allies. Then we go for the energy sigil on both weapon sets because dodging keeps you alive and also because we're in the honor trait line, dodging will heal yourself and nearby allies. So energy sigil is best in slot for sure and intelligence sigil on the hammer because you can still do pretty decent crits on the hammer and then a transference sigil on the axe shield because we want to use that for healing generally because you need a transference sigil so might as well be on the axe shield set which is a little bit more defensive so the traits that we'll be going for are honor and virtues you revive allies not with the signet because even though the signet is really good at reviving it has no aggressive uses so we're not really taking that instead we'll revive with the protective reviver trait so you just have to press f on your allies and it'll knock enemies away then we also heal whenever we block for allies as well so you've got a lot of aegis from the heal skill from advance and from the tome of courage the five skill so that'll heal you've also got the battle presence trait which gives your resolve passive to nearby allies and that will not only heal them because you've got permanent resolve passive because you've got lore master but also because we've got honor your resolve passive also gives a little bit of energy regeneration so your allies also get that energy regeneration which is pretty nice because that is a good way of supporting your allies it's kind of like giving them mini vigor and then we take the shout trait because the symbol trait is not really good in pvp it's been nerfed so we just go for shorter cooldowns on the shouts because you know standard ground is a really long cooldown in pvp and advance is really powerful as well because we're going to be using that to get our swiftness up time and the aegis is just really strong so that's pretty much why we take the uh, shouts here and in virtues we're going to be going for the consecration trait so instead of the res signet we're going to go for sanctuary which can be used to res as well it's got some counterplay to it as well but so does the signet to be honest and with the sanctuary you can also use it aggressively so it's kind of nice for like decapping nodes and using it to like cc enemies because we've got a lot of value from cc in this build because we take the glacial heart trait whenever you cc an enemy you will put chill on them and also the hammer two will chill so if you've ever had chill on you i don't i don't know if you think chill is that good but if you've ever had chill on you it is extremely annoying so chill is really great for locking down enemies but also peeling for your allies because not only are the enemies not able to keep up with you but they'll also have longer cooldowns so you're like disrupting the enemies like synergies so it's really strong and there's so much cc on this build that you get pretty high uptime on that chill and then finally in firebrand we're just going to take the extra tome pages because to get the swift scholar you really need to have a higher tome page pool because it's harder to do those combos when you've only got five pages so we go for the extra pages and then we give quickness to allies whenever we give stability or aegis and of course lore master so that's kind of like the idea of uh, the build there just give out the protection to your allies while you're ceasing enemies and the sanctuary i'm going to be able to put that down here to peel for myself not always is it best to use it for yourself but it is it is usable to kind of survive and there's also a lot of cool like combos that you can do because now you have access to any of your tomes because they don't have cooldowns right so if i use like my axe three and pull someone in and then i'll use my shield five to knock them out then I'll go into my justice tome and then I'll give them the pull 
and then I'll go into my courage tome and I'll taunt them. I can do like four CCs in a row. I can even put the hammer in there. So there's just so many ways to secure kills. And that's what I'm going to be pretty much doing the entire game is just looking for kills where my team is, but also providing support while I'm there. You know, like I can essentially keep my allies alive, but I can't do that forever because I don't have that much sustain. I really want these fights to be ending sooner than later rather than stalling these fights i want to progress them so it is a very kind of like fun play style if you're not used to supporting and you want to kind of like play a support now this is a good transition build because you've got a little bit more aggression on this build and here you'll see i'm going to be able to cc um, i see my team is chasing the spellbreaker here i grab them through the wall with my axe three knock them back and then give them the double tome cc there my teammates didn't really follow up too much on that, so coordination is kind of required. But you can see here there's another combo that's really interesting is the water tome four creates a water field. And then you can use your hammer two in that and get an extra blast heal finisher. So that's really nice for adding a little bit more heal to this build. Now we're going to head into mid. We do see our Ellie is coming in, so I don't really want to be alone because yeah, this build is pretty bad when it's alone it doesn't have that much damage it's easy to focus outnumbered so yeah i'm trying to regroup with my team i get to the bell now and i'm going to use the the tome four there you see the water field with the hammer two really nice combo to get my health back up now i'm going to put sanctuary on the node which will make it really hard for the enemy to pressure me i put the hammer five down as well which makes it maybe a little bit too much overlap there but just more cc and just keeping people off of my allies and now i see that i'm getting focused so i move out but i know that i have to get back in i'm going to give them my tome skills the most powerful ones and try to just keep my allies alive here now i can get the swift scholar here if i stay in the tome for a little bit longer so that's what i'm doing put out the heal well and then i blast it with my hammer too and yeah our allies are going to be doing fine here because i'm constantly giving them aegis constantly giving them stability cleansing them and all the while giving out quickness now my ally goes down here i use sanctuary from range which prevents the spellbreaker from doing anything and they actually get stuck between the sanctuary and the wall so that helps us get the kill there as well so yeah the, the cc is pretty ridiculous on this build and another thing is you can see i put out the fire tome five there it's only one cost and it gives out quite a bit of burn for a power build even though i have really no modifiers for conditions that skill does a lot of damage and it's it's low cost so you might as well if you've got tome pages to spare now my untamed is really low here so i'm going to give out the healing here give the blast on my hammer to heal them up give them aegis by using my heal skill in melee range and i'm going to try to put the sanctuary on top of them to peel for my ally by knocking enemies off them using the cc there i've got my heal four again and I can blast that again with the hammer too. And you can see I'm keeping my ally alive even though they're being focused. And we're getting the kill progressed as well because we're giving out a lot of CC, chill, and we're enabling damage with quickness. So yeah, you can see how useful the build is for like these kind of like group fights. Now we've got the kills here, but this is their spawn point. So we're kind of in a dangerous situation. I'm getting CC'd and I'm low on cooldown, so I kite and I'm still giving out the passive regeneration from my battle presence while I'm up here. So yeah, I'm giving value to my team non-stop in these fights, even while I'm being aggressive. So yeah, it's I think it's a pretty powerful support. Now I'm going to head into mid and I see my allies are kind of low there, so I want to use my... Uh, shout to move a little bit faster i pulled them off the node and that actually gets us the decap and now i'm going to give the aegis and stability to my allies i've got the sanctuary down as well so no one really wants to get close to this node my allies are doing pretty fine one of them has a lot of condies on them but i i don't really have any cleanses right now and they're going to be fine now i'm going to put down the hammer five and they get knocked and then i use my uh, fire tome four skill which just covers the node with a bunch of damage and also another thing is the hammer four is really great at knocking enemies away when they're in the down state especially so like you want to cap a node and you've got enemies down on it 
you don't need to cleave them out because then they respawn sooner so you knock them off the node so you can cap it likewise if enemies are trying to res someone who's downed you can knock the body away and that'll allow your team to more easily keep it in the down state now in this fight here i'm going to give out reflect to my allies and the sanctuary bubble probably didn't need to use both bubbles but we've got the sanctuary down which prevents them from getting anywhere on the node and contesting that so we're able to clean this up pretty quickly even though we're outnumbering them i still am very useful because i'm not a pure support i am an aggressive support so you kind of feel useful in pretty much any place you go to except when you're alone you, you want to be with your team obviously so we're chasing this necromancer we're going to go into mid node i think because our elementalist is fine at far i don't want to plus one on one v one i want to be with my team at mid so we're going to try to give them support here they don't have too many condies on them so i'm probably going to do the four skill and then the hammer two to heal them up and then we can use the hammer yeah that was a good cc combo but they dodged out and stun broke so we baited out some stun breaks at least and now we're going to probably go for yeah the hammer lock here we get the immobilize with the three and we can knock them they dodge though and stun break i'm going to use the hammer five there just so they can't use the jump pad to get up and i can actually cap the node while giving support to my allies below because they're still in range of my battle presence and my uh ashes of the just there so i'm going to leave them because we've got the node capped and they're outnumbering that anyways and i see that my elementalist is getting outnumbered by respawns at far so i'm going to head there as soon as i can try to keep them alive i'm going to use the shield four to give them aegis and we're going to put down the sanctuary probably yep so that this gives a lot of value in like node fights and while they're cc'd i land a pretty decent 3k hammer four so yeah that keeps our teammates alive and actually gets a kill too so once again just showing how much value this build gets from the cc and a little bit of burst that it has but the the supportive capabilities mostly now my ally is in a 1v1 i do want to secure the kill so i'm ccing them into the wall but they leave expecting me to hold the 1v1 i really don't want to be in a 1v1 so i am just going to leave this most likely because yeah, if I get stuck in a 1v1 with an untamed, that's going to be bad. So I, I'm i just watching respawns here. And yeah, I probably should have left earlier for sure. I should have left. But I was just watching the node. And the Skyhammer is up. So I should definitely head there and help my teammates to survive. I rotated pretty late here. So my ally is really pressured. And they were in a 1v3. I'm going to put out the Sanctuary to peel for them. And I could use my heal tome here if I wanted. I use the hammer five and the hammer two. A lot of peeling, so they're gonna be fine. And we, yeah, we just organize the enemies there. So a lot of peeling, but they all jump on me. And as you can see, when you get focused as a firebrand, you die very quickly alone. And my ranger was really pressured because they were outnumbered for so long. So they tried to kite off. So I needed to kite off with them instead of try to contest the node. Um, yeah, and that's why I died. So we're just going to respawn here and head back to the hammer probably to prevent them from capping that. Because we have a trip cap and we want to maintain that. So we don't want to give up the sky hammer. So I'm going to head into there and just immediately use the sanctuary just to get everyone off the node. And their weaver is not, you know, weavers don't have a lot of stun breaks. So with all the CC that I have, it's really hard for them to exist in these team fights. And I get a nice CC here. I use the three and then I use the two in both those tomes for some CC. They stun break and leave, but essentially we're going to get this win. So yeah, that's pretty much how you want to play the Firebrand support playstyle. World versus world is where the versatility of this build really shines because there is a diverse amount of situations you can encounter in world versus world. Like if you're getting shot at by some rangers, you can pop your projectile reflect from the bubble. Or if you're with your team, you can give them stability and they can really get a lot of value out of it. Even though you're kind of playing like a DPS class, you can engage, you can support. And there's also a decent amount of performance you can get from solo roaming as well. Though I suggest that you don't solo roam because you can get easily outnumbered. And Firebrand is kind of low on mobility, so you're not going to be able to get out of those situations too easily. 
Though you do have the judge's intervention, which can allow you to port to neutral mobs and survive that way. But in general, yeah, it's lower mobility and you want to be sticking with your team. However, when you are with your team, you become a very powerful frontline engager because of the Valor trait line, which gives you a lot of boons and those boons will give you sustain. So whenever you give a boon to an ally, you will heal and each instance of a boon gives you healing. So if you're giving out tons of might to yourself, like from the Righteous Instincts trait, then you're going to be healing non-stop. And when you use like your Tome abilities that give out boons, it's multiplying that. So you're healing a lot and it scales up. Your damage combos revolve around some form of pulsing damage, then a CC, and then a burst. So you can get your pulsing damage from a symbol, like your symbol on your greatsword or on your axe too. And then you want to use a CC from either your pull in your F1 tome, you can use the axe three, or you can use the greatsword five, which after it lands, you can then pull them in. And that's pretty versatile because you can hit someone while they're blocking with the pull, if you've already got them tethered. And then you want to use one of your big burst skills, like the greatsword two, and the torch four but you want to use your heal skill right before you use them so that you get quickness on them so you can do a really fast burst so like i can do the torch four twice and that'll do a lot of damage as you can see or i can use the great sword two and if i've got resolution that can crit for up to 6k if i've got fury and you know like 90 percent ish crit chance so that's kind of the idea there is put down a symbol pull them in and then do your quickness burst and you can do that as well with the axe with the four pull them in quickness and then use the torch four so yeah that's pretty much how you want to be playing the build to get kills but the hard part about firebrand is conserving your tome pages while also having enough momentum to survive because firebrand is kind of a slow class and if you're not using the right skills at the right time then you're going to lose resources and if you're trying too hard to use the right skills at the right time but you do so very delayed because you're not sure which one to use then you'll fall behind and you'll die with cooldowns up so you have to practice quite a bit to know in which situations which tome skill to use like if you're immobilized do you want to sit through the entire resolve five skill or do you want to use the resistance from the protection tome it depends on the relative danger of the situation also you want to be getting swift scholars so you have to make judgment calls if you're using your big skills then you don't want to go for swift scholar because then you're going to run out of tomes but if you're using a couple pages here and there then it's probably worth to go for the third tome page from swift scholar so you have to make those judgment calls while also using the right skill at the right time. Like I said, it takes some practice, but it's all worth it in the end because this is, in my opinion, one of the most fun builds and most effective builds you could play in all game modes. With that being said, I hope you all enjoy this content. And if you like the video, then please subscribe, share the video to others, like the video, and if you'd like to support me further, you can do so by clicking the links in the description. Thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me, and I will see you all next time.